Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. I want to present you the Word of God very quickly, and I'll try to be as simple as I can. I believe that this word will help us understand what God is doing for us in this season. And it will also empower us to go further in the journey of our destiny. I believe the word of God will uplift our faith today. So if you may please read with me from the book of Ephesians chapter 5. We'll read one verse and that is verse 18 this is what the words say and do not be drunk if i stop there the message will be already clear for many people <laughs> but i will carry on as the word reads do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit You should not be drunk with wine. Great scholars around tables argue whether drinking alcohol for a child of God is a sin or is not a sin. They go further in the debate arguing that Jesus Christ drank wine and that wine was not juice. And that this debate sometime has no end. Today, I do not want to enter into the debate. Because already many of you who love wine. And you are watching, you want to be validated. You will have to hear a pastor say, I am of those who believe that you can take a little bit. The reason why I will not go that far because I do not want to give you license to also go far. Coming to church with your bottle. And having as reference, Pastor Said. I have never in my life tested alcohol. Glory to Jesus. I do not know how it tests. I have never taken a shot. But ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of God, that does not make me better. That does not make me holier. For it is my sincere belief that uh, it is not what you put in that pollutes you inside. And though I spoke of wine in my introduction today, the word here does not really focus on wine itself. But it focuses on a different thing altogether. The first presentation in the first side of this verse, the Bible gives us a command not to be drunk. And the Bible says, do not be drunk of wine. Do not take it until you lose yourself in it. I know you are saved by grace. Though we come to church and pretend, hallelujah, we all have a past. And God picked us from somewhere. That's right. 
Today is Sunday. Thank God you are able to stand. But yesterday, because of what Saturday will do to you, hey. your Sunday will be spent in bed. But God has restored you. Thank you, Jesus. But at least you have the memory of being drunk. Eh? I refrain myself from making an auto call to see how many people ever been drunk of wine. Some will say, I've never been drunk of wine. Meat was beer. I came to realize when people are drunk, I speak under correction because I observe from the outside, unlike somebody who has gone through it, and I thank God for those who will speak with experience. People who get drunk do not just get drunk. It seems like they have a, a station they stop and go to being full drunk. They are tipsy. Some people you meet them, they are not drunk, but they are no longer the same. They are in between. I remember in the service we had many years ago under my spiritual father, a great service of power. But the service was long and we were all praying but tired. This fellow was on fire, but he was overdoing it. He was saying amen even when the pastor will cough. <laughs> he was bubbling. He was jumping. He will give a high five to everyone next to him even when they were, were not in the mood. We, most of us, took it as the day of the Holy Ghost in him, not knowing he was tipsy. There are vital signs that tells us that somebody is drunk and drunk with wine. See, when you are drunk, you lose your coordination. You start stumbling. The same road that you take every day, now you are confused where to put your foot. There is a lack of coordination. Meaning, there is a sense that you have lost yourself. Can I get a witness in the house? My Jesus. The second sign is that you start hallucinating. Hear me. Before you take the vision of the one saying, he's seeing angels everywhere, get close to know whether it is the spirit or wine. I am seeing. They are coming. They are coming. When somebody is drunk, it is easy for that person to hallucinate. The person gets loud. Loud speech than usual. You are next to the person, but he's telling you a story of the other person, meaning gossiping, but he's not doing it quietly. What an embarrassment for you. Because you don't want to be part of this. Somebody walks in and they say, look at them. L look. The person is loud. Everything he's doing is loud. There is a mood swing. 
and change of personality. I had an uncle, a very strict uncle. My uncle was very strict in everything that he does until he meets wine. We all knew that if uncle drinks wine, we can come to speak to him. Before that, stay away. The first thing you will ask you is, did you do your homework? If you say yes, you say, can I please see the book? He will go to your result. He will make sure that uh, he scrutinizes you and puts you in line. But after drinking, uncle doesn't talk to you about school. He's uh, telling you about his girlfriend. You become buddies. He's open to everything. I remember this vividly. He was watching soccer, meaning football. And we came to be with him because he drank already enough. And he said, tell me, who do you think will win? This is to team play. While I'm scratching my head trying to figure out who will win, he said, I'll tell you. Maybe this one, this one will win. If this doesn't win, the other one will win. <laughs> Drowsiness. When somebody is drunk, we see him drowsy. You, you will sit in front of people and there you go sleeping. And when they wake you up, you do not know the story, how far it went. Someone is sleeping in church. And as they woke him up, the first thing that he did was to stand and say, Amen! And nobody knew. My precious in the Lord. After speaking like this, I realized the amount of love that led the man of God to tell us, do not be drunk with wine. It will prevent you a number of things. But it says something. It presents something better than being drunk with wine. It say, but... But it's spelled B-U-T. A simple word that changes everything. It say, but be filled with the spirit. The spirit word here is with a capital S meaning pointing to the Holy Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Make a transition. From wine to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you replace the word drunk with the word filled. The same way when you are drunk, you are taken to things that sometimes goes beyond your control. It's the same thing that takes place when you are filled. The Spirit of God takes you to things that you will normally do in your normal sense. That's why you say, be filled with the Spirit. Now we know that every child of God, whoever gave his life to Jesus Christ, whoever opened his heart and say, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior, has the Spirit of God in him. Here Paul is not talking about that level of you having the Holy Ghost in you as a sign of your new birth. We also know that there is another dimension of uh, 
being filled of the Holy Spirit. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, the first dimension, not of having the Holy Spirit in you, but being filled of the Holy Spirit. And this dimension is known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit all over you and inside you. You become like an empty bottle thrown in water. Water goes in and water covers the bottle all over. This is the reason why being filled with the Holy Spirit through the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue is crucial for every believer because the Spirit of God comes in you. But beyond being baptized in the Holy Ghost, if once you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, that is a one-time experience. The Bible tells us that you can have an experience daily. It's called an infilling of the Holy Ghost experience. Every child of God, those who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, every minister, every pastor, every believer, everyone who loves God, can experience an infilling of the Holy Ghost. Now, the infilling of the Holy Ghost is when the Holy Ghost comes and fills you up again. We see in the Word of God that those who had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts chapter 2, in the book of Acts chapter 4, we see them being filled again with the Holy Ghost. It is like one who will think that something leaves you as you go. And you need to keep on regenerating yourself and refilling yourself. And making sure that you have it inside you. Shortly I will explain to you why this is important. But please read with me. The book of Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Speaking of the inner feeling of the Holy Spirit. Book of Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. This is the disciples and the apostles. After the first miracle taken place, through the ministry of Peter and John, persecution came to the church. Peter and John were arrested. And as the church gathered, receiving them and hearing the testimony, what they had experienced, they prayed to God. They say, O oh Lord, see the threat and give to your servant to preach the gospel with power. As they pray in the Holy Ghost, verse 31, the Bible says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. It is my plea today to the Holy Spirit and my plea to God. May the church of God go back to the place where we are open to the supernatural in the name of and Jesus. experience the hand of God in our times, just as those. Recorded in the scriptures. I submit to you that this is in our dispensation. The place where they had assembled was shaken. There was a small earthquake because people prayed. Oh, well, I know the church is no longer prepared to see the supernatural power of God manifest. We say it is not uh, acceptable. We have become no more. Churches are clubs. We are just gathering. There is nothing more than our aims. We are all a victim and hooked in the routines of our programs. God is not manifesting his power within us. And nobody wants that. It is reported that the place where they were assembled together was shaken. May the day come when you walk in Hallelujah Ministries International. As you enter Kelvin View. That as we pray. 
we may see everything shaken I that Satan may it. feel God that Johannesburg may feel God that Africa may feel God these are experiences that you need to desire Amen. without these experiences we are like dogs with no teeth Jesus the church does not have substance the only substance that makes us different is the supernatural power of God. If you will take away the supernatural power of God, we become like just any association. That's right. A cultural group of men and women who share the same ideology. We are God's people. Amen. We are not mere men. I will say that. We are alive in spirit. We are spirit. We have souls. And we live in bodies. May your spirit man manifest. I receive it. We respond to matter in the spiritual way. The day a pastor will begin to preach and nothing else. He is not better than a lecturer. That's right. God prevents me to become ordinary. Oh, Jesus. And if the spirit of God has to be taken away from me, and the anointing has to be taken away from me for one minute, take me to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. God is looking for men and women who are connected to his word who will stand like Elijah stood in Mount Carmel challenging the prophet of Baal and Asherah and say call on your God and I will call on my God the God who answers by fire he shall be God in this dying world this world of corruption this world covered with the clouds of darkness where good is called wrong and wrong is called good in this time where our children are being taught the ways of evil and they say parents cannot have authority to help them come back on the ways of God in this time where they have made it normal to do evil and they say no matter what God say in his word what we say is what goes it is time for us to stand out not to fit in it is time to stand out when you stand out they will see you when you stand up they will persecute you when you stand out they will fight you when you stand up they will speak bad about you but I don't care I don't care God be for me who can be against me the Lord your God is with you he will cause you to win it is time time of power time of power lift your hands say give me power give me power because they pray the place where they assembled physically mm. not spiritually Never it was just in it. mind well, I don't believe that those miracles are from God. I'm a child of God, but I'll tell, tell you. There are too many things happening out there. It's true, there are too many things happening out there. But the standing out thing that is happening out there is our God standing. When you are sick, before you go to the hospital, call on him. He has never ceased to be Jehovah Rapha. In the days of trouble, before you call on your lawyer, touch your altar. The Lord of your altar will defend your cause. I believe. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I receive it. They come against you by one way. 
they shall be scattered I in seven different ways. Me. What God set in you cannot be stopped. I believe. I say it cannot be stopped. I receive it. I am speaking as an authorized man of God. It cannot be stopped. I receive it. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more. Desire spiritual experiences. You see, the reason why people out there are even afraid of uh, witch doctors more than they are afraid of servants of God is because servants of God did not manifest the glory of God. That's right. We are normal. We wear suits. And we speak. What a waste of time. Desire spiritual manifestation in your finances, in your day-to-day -day life, in your family. Speak to God for your children and believe He will intervene. Yes, Lord. Have a desire, have that thirst to see things that are Beyond what rationality can absorb. Healing taking place. Those are things that you should run after. It must be part of you. Oh, well, you should not go through all those. Because you see that the devil does miracle. Shame on you. No one can compare the miracles of God to anyone. Yes. Oh well, the magicians of Pharaoh also threw the stick and it turned into serpent. What happened to those serpents? There are levels and levels. Ah yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard a magician resurrecting somebody who was dead for four days? Mm. Never compare God's work to the work of the enemy. I believe God. I have seen him manifest his glory. I've seen him take somebody who was thrown in the dustbin and put him to sit with the great... God is. He will send a battalion of angels for you. I receive it. The servant of Elijah said, Alas, alas, my master, we are surrounded. It is over. He said, Oh, you are looking at it in the natural realm. Those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. He said it because of the spiritual realm. In the natural realm, cancer is winning. In the natural realm, the symptoms are multiplying. But in the spiritual realm, you are healed by straps. Amen. This his servant could still not get it. He prayed over him. He said, oh God, open his eyes that he may see. And he saw an army, horses and chariots around Elijah. Zita Hosha Barebata. Today you win. I receive it. I said, today you win. I receive. Let me tell you, even as I am speaking now, the shrine that has your name on it is catching fire. Fire! Hear me. If the devil knew this would happen, he would have stopped you from coming. That's right. As I speak to you now, 
the evil altar of witchcraft where great grace has been done against you that you may not reach destiny that you may be pulled down as i speak now the lord is breaking it the, the hammer of, of god is breaking it in jesus name i torment everyone tormenting you in the name of jesus i say it i torment everyone tormenting you in jesus name. with the fire of god i torment everyone tormenting you in jesus name in the name of jesus amen it shall be known you are different i receive it it shall be known you are different. I was Somebody had an Ira seven. I was seven. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Mm -hmm. You may be seated. While some preachers are too loud, certain folks say it's never. And it is known you don't say never. Never say never. Some people still think too high. When you hear them, it is like they are too full of themselves. You can sense that they are arrogant. Can I have you? When you are filled with the spirit. And you speak bold. It is not arrogance. It is the audacity. Of the faith you have in God. This is what led Paul. That you will call a motto to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are more than a conqueror. The Bible says they were filled with the Spirit, and the result, they spoke the word of God with boldness. When you see men and women of God on this altar, sanctified, anointed, on fire, speak with boldness, telling you you will be healed, telling you you are blessed, telling you the devil cannot win over you. It is because they are filled. With the spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You do not fear. Amen. Something comes on you. You become bold. Bolder than the one who drank wine. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost. The devil looks at you as stubborn. You develop inner strength. You just know that you know. You command a devil to go and it is not a negotiation. I was saved. You say, I command you to go. Now, go. And he goes. Jesus. You speak to mountain and say, move. And the mountain moves. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the power of God becomes your portion. Amen. Do not leave Jerusalem, he say. Remain until you receive power when the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, till the ends of the earth. They will always set traps to fight you. You should worry if they all agree with you. Right. Because if you do not come across the devil, you are walking with him. Mm. But you should not be afraid. Right. You should expect them. Yes. 
the law of the jungle. Eat or be eaten. I will arise stronger. Yes. I will fight more. Yes. And one thing is for sure. In my DNA, there is no defeat. Amen. I am a winner. Amen. Devil, you cannot have me. You cannot have my home. No. You cannot have my health. You cannot have my finances. No. You cannot have my ministry. You cannot have my children. You cannot. You cannot. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Alf Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Alf Lukau on all social media platforms at Alf Lukau.